What's up, guys? Welcome to the Don't Forget to Love podcast with me, Mara Sullivan. In today's episode, I will be sharing some of the things that have helped me to become a better version of myself and the things that I'm doing to keep improving in every every area of my life, from my health to finances, career, relationships, hobbies, all the areas of my life. I don't always like saying the best version of yourself because as humans, we are constantly trying to become better and trying to do more. Just like I really don't like the phrase new year, new me, like not just because it's played out, but because um, just because I make changes in my life or do things differently each year does not always mean that I'm a completely new person. I'm just growing and evolving every year. But, you know, at our cores, we'll, we're still the same people. Um, and when we reach our ideal goals and become who we want to be, it's just in our nature to find something else to work on and look for even more ways to continue to develop. I believe that we don't truly finish growing and improving until we die, until we literally cannot do anything anymore. There's always something else we can do. There's always someone else we can help, somewhere else we can go. Life really never, never stops until we stop living. That's why so many people who can can afford to stop working continue to work anyway or most people like even when they retire they find something else to do because as humans we're just designed to keep going until it's over the first thing I want to say is that if you haven't already you have to get clear and write down who and what the best version of yourself is for me the best version of myself is living and operating in my full potential and using my gifts and talents in ways that make me feel fulfilled and also helps and inspires other people when i am my best self i'm not lazy i'm doing my best to treat other people right i'm showing up for myself and other people um, i'm keeping my word to myself keeping the promises that i make to myself and to other people i'm giving my body the exercise and nutrition it needs if that's something you struggle with or are trying to do better with think about um, your dog or if you had a dog that you really loved you know that you would have to take care of them you have to take them for walks you would have to let them get outside you would have to give them healthy food that's good for them so if you do your best to make sure that your pet is properly taken care of, you have to do the same thing for yourself. My best self doesn't bottle up emotions. I journal. I process my feelings. I communicate well. Of course, I love worshiping God, praying, reading my Bible. My best self also reads for fun. You guys know I like fiction and nonfiction. I drink a ton of water. I'm saving money, spending time with people who I feel good around and enjoy being with. When I feel like my best self, I'm being mindful of the media and the content that I'm consuming, the music, the social media, TVs, movies, it all impacts our mood and how we act so much more more than it realize than we realize it does. Everything we see and hear goes di directly to our brain and so do your best to make sure that you're being mindful about what you're feeding your brain and the content you're consuming. You have to really get to know yourself and be honest about the things um, you know you need to work on. Again, when it comes to the best version of yourself, be specific about who that person is, not just physically, but emotionally. How do you want to feel? What do you want to do? If you guys listened to my episode on making your dreams a reality, I talked about living and acting like your dream self before you become that person. If you haven't listened to it, definitely check it out if you want. But it's important to not wait until you have all of the resources or the perfect job or the perfect body or your ideal feelings and circumstances to start acting like the person you want to be. Do small things every day that make you become the best version of yourself. What time does your best self wake up? What time do they go to sleep? Do they work out? What do they eat? How do they spend their time? Who do they spend their time with? What do they listen to? How do they treat other people? Most times when we think about the best version of ourselves, we only focus on the things like you want to have or what you want to look like physically, but it's so critical to think about how you want to act and how you want to think. Make a list of what the best version of yourself looks like to you. It's good to have the money and the body goals, of course, we all do, but also list the habits and routines and the kinds of people you want to surround yourself with and the personality traits of your best self. 
And then, like I said, start doing small things right now that your best self does. So wake up a little earlier to exercise and make yourself a healthy breakfast or lunch for the day so you don't have to eat fast food and spend extra money. When you interact with people today, be mindful of what you say and how you say it and think about how the best version of yourself treats other people. When making plans with friends or family or dating, think about who your best self has around them and make adjustments to your circle if you need to. I know it's hard and people might be mad, but we all know that leveling up and, you know, elevating our life requires us to move differently. How does your best self spend money? What do they invest in? What does their credit look like? And start making adjustments if you need to. We are in the beginning of a brand new year and everyone is focused on their goals and thinking about the future. So make sure that you don't just think about the things you want this year, but think about the overall person you want to become and start making the changes now to become your best self. When it comes to leveling up, you really have to prioritize what you actually want and what you're really after because most people aren't really striving for the titles, the position, the luxury car, the big house, the designer clothes, like those things themselves. What a lot of us actually want is how we will feel when we have those things. It's the like it's the feeling that you want or the way you want other people to respond or look at you when they see you with the bag or driving the car or living in the house or being the boss or the CEO or winning the award. Don't wait until you have everything you want to feel good or feel good about yourself. I've heard a lot of people say that getting the things did not make them feel how they thought they would feel or it was fun for a minute but then it's not enough and you're ready for something else so just remember that a lot of the times we're actually not chasing that whatever the material thing is it's the feeling that comes with that and sometimes like I said it also has to do with how other people respond so just make sure that when you're setting your goals and leveling up you're doing it for you that you know what you want and you're not just doing it for other people Um, so that other people can be envious of you or look at you a certain way. Um, Just make sure that you're doing things for yourself. Again, as humans, we're wired to always strive for more, Um, but be happy and feel accomplished for what you already have and what you've already done, so you're not waiting until you hit a certain milestone to be happy. I want to talk a little bit about mental health because I know it's hard to be your best self if you are struggling with things like depression, anxiety, insomnia, or even just feeling sad, lonely, unhappy, stuck in a rut, whatever the case may be. I want to define mental health real quick because it's become one of those terms that's thrown around a lot now and sometimes only used to describe specific types of people, but we all have mental health. Just like we all have physical health. So according to the CDC, mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make healthy choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life. So the first thing is to get professional help if you need it. Therapy is so much more affordable now than it used to be, and apps like BetterHelp have made it easier to get access to professionals and get help um, get help get you treatment if you need it. Most like primary doctors, like primary care doctors, are also a lot more open and understanding now about anxiety, depression, bipolar than they used to be in the past because there's so much more ar- awareness around mental health. Um, And it's uh, taken more seriously now than it has been in the past. Struggling with mental health isn't all like it's not as taboo as it used to be. So if you know you need help, maybe you've been trying to do things on your own, but you still feel off. I highly recommend seeking professional help if you can. And I just wanted to put this in here because especially in the black community, a lot of our people sometimes live in denial and sweep things under the rug or say things like, that's just how I am or that's just who they are. But sometimes professional help is necessary. So if you have been putting off getting help or in um, 
or putting off encouraging a loved one to get help, make this the year that you do. Of course, we can't make anyone do anything, but sometimes people just need encouragement or need to know that they have someone supporting them and not dismissing or making fun of them if they need help. And like I said, we all have mental health. For some people, it's poor health, and for others, it's good health. We all experience good and bad emotions and good and bad mental states. So outside of professional help, let's talk about some ways and things that help me when I'm in a negative space, whether it's feeling sad, lonely, unhappy, stuck, scared, any negative emotion, as I mentioned before. Journaling a lot definitely helps. You have to get things out of your head and not bottle everything up. Holding in, holding things in will just create more tension and more stress in your body. Also, like I said, exercising, walking is my favorite thing to do. I also um, love reading, prayer, getting quiet, and being still, not consuming content that will make me feel worse it's a cliche to like reach for alcohol or junk food to make ourselves feel better when we feel like crap and it's okay in like a small amount for comfort if you want to but we should be reaching for the things that will actually make us feel better even if it's not what you want in that moment drink some water get some tea for me green juice or a green smoothie always makes me feel better no matter how bad i'm feeling talking to a friend or a family member and it doesn't have to um, be like a venting session about your life of course you know if you can do that that's good but when you're talking to other people see how they're doing one of my favorite like tricks to do to get myself out of a bad mood is to take the focus off of myself and put it on someone else by helping them or making their day better or just checking in to see how someone else is doing I think it's Tony Robbins, who has the quote, if you focus on others, you disappear. And that is so true. Sometimes we get so consumed in our feelings and um, only focus on what we want or what we want other people to do for us. We actually need to go do something for someone else and it will definitely make you feel better. It also helps um, if you have something or someone that can take you out of the negative space that you're in even if it's just for a little while you can like go back and be sad later (laughs) but it helps um just to get out of that mindset even if it's just for a little while pretty sure i learned that from jay shetty he has a really good podcast with selena gomez all about mental health you guys know that she's been super open about her bipolar disorder and everything that she's been through so that's a really good episode to check out if you want some more in-depth insight and of course her documentary is incredible and she really takes a deep dive into mental health challenges So my next tip might be like super counterproductive, but for me, working actually helps me to feel better if I'm not feeling great. Because again, sometimes I just need to focus on something besides myself or whatever bad situation or circumstance might be going on. Of course, you should not work more to avoid your problems or distract yourself from dealing with things that you need to face, but it it definitely helps and is healthy to take your mind off of you and your life even if it's just for a while like I said go into a different place for a while can also help go outside take a walk walk around a store go to a gym go to church a long drive to clear your head that's also why it's so important to have hobbies and things that you like to do so that when you are in a negative headspace and or you do feel down you can do something that will make you feel better I also love watching something funny I love a good feel-good movie or show. Y'all know I love the Kardashians. I love Golden Girls. Vegas Vacation with uh, Chevy Chase is probably my favorite movie. I love a good comedy, especially like the old school throwback movies. Again, don't watch and listen to things that will make you feel even worse. When we do that, it's like kicking yourself if you're already down. It just doesn't make any sense. So be super mindful about the content that you consume, especially if you're already feeling bad. And sometimes you do need to just lay in bed. Like a good cry is good for the soul. 
definitely get rest go to sleep sleep helps so much too like if you're having a hard time processing your emotions or feeling all over the place or if you are fighting with somebody i know people say don't go to bed angry but sometimes you both just need to go to sleep it's hard to properly communicate and get control of your feelings when you're exhausted and when you're spent and if you're arguing with someone neither one of you is really listening to the other person some things you just need to sleep on and you'll have some more clarity and not be so high strung when you wake back up wear things that make you feel good even if you're in the house i think the pandemic taught us how great like really nice loungewear is i love to listen to a podcast or good music while I cook or clean, light a candle, all that stuff is really therapeutic. Also, like I said, managing my money well, living below my my means, saving um, the money that I make, not spending on a bunch of things or food that I don't need helps so much when it comes to my mental health because I have some peace of mind. Finances can stress us out so much and really take a toll on our emotions and how we act and how we feel. I have a whole episode on how I saved my first $10,000 a few years ago, so you can check that out if you want to. But remember that your relationship with money and the uh, money habits that you have often do have a real impact on your mental health. Also, make sure you're helping yourself first and making yourself happy first. It's nice when other people do things for us and show up for us, but you cannot be dependent on other people to make you feel better. You know that I always say what other people do for me is secondary. It's in addition to what I'm already doing for myself. You have to believe in yourself first as well because other people will not always believe in you or support your dreams or um, support the fact that you're trying to change your life or level up but them not believing in you and what you want to do cannot stop you from believing in yourself and making whatever you want to make happen for yourself Also, hopefully each of us will be celebrating another birthday this year. If you are a January baby, happy birthday. I know some people dread getting older, but we have to normalize getting better, not worse with age. In our society, especially for women, getting older is seen so often as a bad thing, but every year we are hopefully learning more, making more, becoming better people and doing new and different things as we get older we have again hopefully not everyone gets better when they get older but we should be getting wiser figuring out more about ourselves and what we're supposed to do with our lives and getting more settled into who we are and having more confidence most of the people most of the older people i look up to will tell you that the older you get the less you care about what people think about you i love like shows like golden girls and movies like book club and it's complicated uh, and even like the medea movies because the older characters are living their lives they've been through life they've made their money and they're able to enjoy what they've worked for and we all know like tyler perry's medea character is like the epitome of an old person not giving a crap about like anything or anyone so definitely if you are hopefully like i said hopefully we will all be blessed to celebrate another birthday this year or you have already definitely normalize getting better not worse as we all get older if any of you guys know rob dyrdek he's the guy from all of the mtv shows like ridiculousness robin big fantasy factory one of the things he always says is that as he gets older he's getting healthier more efficient happier balanced lighter he says that as he grows his life is more effortless his system is more efficient he is in better physical condition he's more balanced he's getting wealthier and happier he says that there is no reason why you cannot keep getting happier healthier and wealthier for the rest of your life so if you're someone who does not like birthdays or admitting your age or you feel behind because you're not hitting society's deadlines one there's no such thing as an actual deadline in society. People put, you know, so much pressure on, you know, hitting 30 and what we're supposed to do by 40 and what we're supposed to have by 60. All that stuff is is made up. Like it really does not exist. There is no real timeline. 
just remember that the timing of your life is completely up to you and up to God and no one else. And if you are scared or um, scared of getting older or fearful of the future, think about your life um, getting better with age, not worse. We have to start seeing getting older as the blessing that it is. Most people who are older um, and those who have reached their dreams and accomplished their goals will tell you that the accomplishment was great, but it was the journey and what they went through and the things that they learned through their experiences that mean the most. Life is about the journey because even when you do get what you want, the work does not stop there. It'll be on to the next thing, figuring out what the next season of your life looks like. The journey never stops. So while you're getting locked into your goals and focusing on making your dreams a reality, remember to not be so tunnel visioned that you're not enjoying your life and you're still having fun and spending time with people and making memories along the way. This podcast is called Don't Forget to Love because we can forget to make time for the little things like calling our friends and family or just being still for a few minutes every day or not rushing through a meal but enjoying it, spending time outside, getting sunlight. It's those little things that mean the most in the long term. We often think that like the big things are the cars and the labels and the houses and the trips, but those are actually the little things. The big things are the people, the time, your daily habits, your mental state, your health, doing what's good for you. So make sure you don't get the big things confused with the little things and becoming the best version of yourself and getting the life you want does take a lot of work oftentimes it takes out working everyone around you and doing things that other people will not do to get the things that they do not have stay on the grind be on your hustle just make sure that you are doing your best to leave a little room for other things that also matter i'm a huge believer in putting in the work and paying your dues you cannot get something for nothing some other quick things that i do to be the best version of myself is of course like i already said drink as much water as i can every day if i'm traveling or have a crazy busy day when i know like Obviously, I can't like go to the bathroom as much as I would need to, then I will not drink as much water. Also, having good protein, eggs, grass-fed meat, organic, high-quality chicken, salmon. I love peanut butter. I love tea. I like green tea, pe- peppermint tea, but raw honey, lemon, cayenne pepper. Electrolytes also make a really big difference if you're feeling tired or need an extra boost. I am um, also as mindful as possible um, of my sugar and caffeine intake. I love coffee. But I definitely do not have more than um, one cup a day because I know how caffeine can really disrupt your body, your hormones, all the things. I also hardly ever have uh, soda or juice. I try not to have too many empty calories. I like food, y'all, so I like to make my calories count. Um, Decluttering my space as much as possible, listening to good music, sermons, taking trips when I want to, going to shows, concerts, events when there's something or someone I want to go see. Um, And even just going to the movies is one of my favorite things to do. Having healthy food and snacks on hand also is uh, so I'm not always ordering in. Probably the most important thing that I do when leveling up and becoming the uh, best version of myself is to focus on just making progress. I learned from Tony Robbins that the way to make yourself happier is to just make progress every day. He says that you have to grow, expand, find something meaningful and share it with other people. Your life becomes more um about other people and not just you connecting with others is real happiness leveling up is not about your money it's about your growth as an overall person are you getting wiser are you getting smarter are you getting more mature it's a fact that everything and everyone either grows or it dies that goes for humans plants animals relationships businesses it's all about growing making progress getting better and we are never finished the journey as a human being does not end until we die we all know that that is pretty much the whole point of life 
So make sure you guys are doing your best to focus on, like I said, what you want, what you want to be, not just the things you want to have. And make sure that you are taking the time um, just to be around the people who make you feel good, do things that make you feel good, focusing on the big things that are might that might seem small in our lives, but those are actually the things that make the most difference and that are the most important. So that is it for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you share this episode, rate and review it. It helps me to keep making more of these for you guys. You can DM me anytime with any questions or topics you want me to cover. My Instagram is at Mara P. Sullivan. You can also find me at DFTL Podcast. Remember that no matter what you do or don't have going on in your life, do not forget to love. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.